What's up everybody? If you're new to this channel, my name is Quentin Stuckey, otherwise known as Stucks. I make videos to do with narrative, psychology, philosophy, among so many other topics. If you are new to this channel, please hit the link below and subscribe. And be sure to click on that bell icon so you can see the latest video from me. So as you can probably tell from the title, I am back making videos about high sensitivity. And for those of you that don't know, I myself am a highly sensitive person. I'll never forget the first time that I read Dr. Elaine Aaron's book. It was recommended to me by my first psychotherapist and my life has never been the same since. And I, like many of you, I have only relatively recently discovered that I possess the trait and I still struggle to incorporate my trait into the makeup of my life because as I'm sure most of you are aware, at least in the Western world, society is really not built towards high sensitivity. It tends to stress individualism, it tends to stress competition, it tends to stress gregariousness and extroversion, and those are often not traits that coincide with the traits of high sensitivity. So today I want to talk about how to be more assertive as a highly sensitive person. Now, not all highly sensitive people will struggle with being assertive, but from the people that I've talked to and from my own experiences, and as well as some of the uh, research literature on high sensitivity, assertiveness is very difficult for highly sensitive people because we are so in tune with the wants, needs, and feelings of other people that we often forget to put our own interests first. And obviously, in order to live a meaningful life and to live a happy life, you have to be able to assert yourself and put your own thoughts and feelings and interests forward. I think the main reason that highly sensitive people struggle with assertiveness is because one, the world feels a little bit more overwhelming to you. The world, as I like to say, is turned up a couple more notches and so it's very easy to get overwhelmed by the demands of life, by the internal and external stimuli. And oftentimes as a highly sensitive person, at least I see this within myself, when I want to make a decision, I often think, well, how does this how does this get other people's needs met? And and what does my family think of this? And what do my friends think of this? And and how is this going to affect other people? You know, I want I definitely include the opinions of other people in decisions that I make. Now, not all the time, obviously it's de it's dependent on the situation, but I do find myself often thinking like, hmm, maybe I should ask what this person thinks before I do this or, you know, how will this person react if I say this? And it's something that I've gotten a lot better at. In fact, I have a lot of friends tell me that I'm more assertive and more disagreeable than I give myself credit for, which I think is kind of true. I, I think that my assertiveness, however, is dependent on the situation. In some situations, I find it really easy to stand up for what I believe in, and I find it easy to stand up to people no matter how you know, bullying they might be or how how disagreeable they might be. But in other situations, I find it really difficult to say what I mean and to say no and to stand up for myself and to be confrontational. It's definitely something that I still struggle with, but I've definitely gotten better at it. And obviously, if you're a highly sensitive person and you're more on the passionate, assertive side, it's a little bit easier for you. Just because you're highly sensitive doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to have issues being assertive, but again, I have found that for highly sensitive people, it is a challenge that many of us face. So today I wanted to outline four different ways that you can be more assertive, not just as a highly sensitive person, but as a person in general, because I, I remember reading somewhere that one of the reasons that people often go to therapy is because they need help with being assertive and, and being less agreeable and, and standing up for, for what they want and, and advocating for what they want. And so I thought it'd be really important to make a YouTube video about that. So that's what I'm doing today. One way to be more assertive is to make a list of your complete wants and needs on a daily basis. So think of your average day, think about um, say an average work day and what do you need on that day? So obviously you need a good night's sleep, you need food, you need um, maybe to do some mindfulness practice, maybe you need to journal or meditate or do some yoga. You obviously need to show up at your job and you obviously need breaks, but what else do you need? What specific things? What specific things do you need? Do you need a walk at the end of the day? Do you need a bath at the end of the day? Do you need to turn off all technology at the end of the day and just be off of your phone? What do you really need? I think one of the reasons that people and highly sensitive people struggle with being assertive about what they want is because they don't really know what they want. They're so used to fulfilling what other people want that they have that they often don't stop to ask themselves well what the hell do I want like I matter too like I'm a person just like 
this one person that I'm busy looking after, what do I want? What do I want to need? And I think that that's really difficult for people, but obviously it gets easier if you're willing to sit down and reflectively think, well, what is it that I really want and need? And then once you figure that out, it will be way easier for you to be more assertive because you've gotten clear about this is what I want and this is what I need and this is how I'm going to get it as extreme as that sounds. That's the kind of thinking that you need if you want to be more assertive in your own life. The second way that you can be more assertive is when you want to say no, say it. Say no. Obviously saying no is dependent on the situation that you find yourself in, but I can guarantee you that if you have a hard time being assertive, there will be so many times when you want to say no to someone and you don't say no, you say yes. And if you keep doing that over time, eventually you're going to get resentful of that person and you're going to wonder why you're not able to get your needs met and you're going to feel like a doormat with people walking all over you and you're going to wonder why you don't have people's respect and why people are always coming to you for things because they know that you have a really hard time saying no and being disagreeable and so they're going to keep coming to you because they know that you'll never say no and as I said, it's, it's a vicious cycle and so if something comes up, like say some say a friend asks you hey, can you help me move my couch and you had plans for the day, say no. Say, hey, you know what? I would love to help you, but I'm busy. I made plans for the day. Maybe there's someone else that can help you. Or you could say to them, hey, you know what? I'm busy today. I would really love to help you, but I just can't shift my schedule. Um, maybe if you wait until tomorrow, I can help you, but today that I can't. So you can say no without being rude about it. You can say, I'm not willing to help you now, but I can definitely help you later. And most people will respect you if you say, you know what, I, I'd love to help you, but I can't. However, maybe we can do this. Like they're, they're more satisfied if you say no and then try and work out some kind of compromise. It's way easier to do that than to just bluntly say, no, I'm not doing this because I don't want to. It's, it's way easier to say that. And it's less rude. Obviously, it's less rude if you say no and you try and, you know, help them modify the plan. Because obviously, like, you know, if you're a person that's very compassionate and empathetic, it's, it's really hard to say no. You don't want to let people down, but sometimes you have to. You have to let people down, and that's just, that's just the reality of life. The third way that you can be more assertive is to remember that when you take care of yourself, you are also taking care of other people. It's not selfish to look after your own wants, needs, and interests because if you don't look after yourself then you're not going to have the energy to look after your family to look after your friends to look after your partner to look after your community to look after the environment if you look after yourself it's it's a chain reaction that spreads out you also have to look after yourself because no one else is going to do that for you obviously it's important to rely on loved ones for support and help and love but at the end of the day, you also have to learn to be your own best friend because you are the one that's responsible for your own life, your own feelings. And there's no one that can make you feel good about yourself. There's no one that can really make you feel bad about yourself. At the end of the day, it all comes down to you. And so it's important to take some responsibility for your own life and to learn that in order to take care of yourself, you have to be selfish. You have to be selfish. And... Again, that's not to say that you should go around and not be willing to help people and not be there for people that really matter, but you have to have boundaries. You have to have certain limits. And so if you remind yourself that by taking this bubble bath or by journaling or by meditating, I am preserving my energy so that I can expel my energy onto other people or to other causes that are really important to me, then doing the self-care work will not feel so negatively selfish. The last thing to remember about learning to be more assertive is that forming a new habit takes time. There's that old saying, I first heard it in uh, the Alfred Hitchcock movie Psycho, um, all habits die hard, which is so true. Once you get accustomed to doing something, it's really, really hard to break that habit. And for some people, they're so used to doing things for other people without having people do things for them or without them doing things for themselves that they get so used to it that that seems to be the only way that they can do things but that's obviously not true and so when you practice being assertive it's going to be really difficult for you to kind of shift your thinking but you know there's that principle of neuroplasticity that we're able to 
change the wiring of our brain and to reconceptualize our life and change our behaviors. And again, it's a chain reaction that just bleeds out to other aspects of your life. So once you change your thought, you can change your actions, which changes your entire life. And so really be patient with yourself. If you want to develop more assertiveness skills, it's going to take time, but you can start small. You can start by learning to say no by saying no to someone when you really want to say no instead of just intrinsically jumping at the opportunity to help someone and saying yes that's one way that you can start small and learn to be more assertive so be patient with yourself there's nothing wrong with being an agreeable person there's nothing wrong with being compassionate every once in a while it's fine to you know set your own needs aside for the good of someone else or or a, a group or whoever it might be but at the end of the day, remember that you matter too. You are a human being and you're a great human being and you deserve the love, kindness, and support that you so often bestow onto others. So I hope that you all remember that when it comes to being assertive. It's not selfish. It's not selfish. It is self-preservation, which is so important for the survival of our species. That's all the time that we have for today. If you are new to this channel, please hit the like button and subscribe. And the Patreon link is linked below. Any money that you give me helps me to bring on higher profile guests. It allows me to purchase better editing equipment. It allows me to do deeper, deeper dives into the research that I want to explore. So any amount helps. $10 a month, $11 a month, $13 a month, $1,000 a month, any amount at all. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next Friday. Thank you.